Hello and welcome back. My name's Andrew Keeping. I'm a guitarist and a music producer. And on my YouTube channel, I've had some requests to talk about what to look for when buying a new guitar. Now, I think probably for the purposes of this video, I'm going to look at just solely talking about a complete beginner's guide to looking at buying a guitar. If you're an intermediate, advanced guitarist, the techniques will have pretty much the same. However, by that time you'll know what you're looking for. So let's start from scratch. What guitar are we looking for? Well, it pretty much depends on what has inspired you in the first place to take up the guitar. Was it somebody you saw on a video playing a certain sort of guitar? Was it the sound of a piece of music or just the idea of wanting to play an instrument? Now, that means that we have to understand what options there are out there. So, first of all, you could be looking at a classical guitar, also called a Spanish guitar, also called a nylon string guitar. Nylon string guitar because, obviously, the strings here are a nylon string on the trebles and still wound nylon on the bass. They're a thicker string. Generally, the body is a thicker thicker neck with a thicker body to it. It's completely resonant with chambers around and the neck is a thicker neck so therefore the strings are easier to play. They're softer on the fingers and the sort of sound that you'd be playing is That isn't to say that you couldn't play any style of music on it so you could play a blues. You can strum it. That's the nylon string guitar. Uh, the advantages of the nylon string guitar are that if you're a complete beginner, it fits comfortably under the hand, the neck, the fingers, the technique, everything about it means that the, it's not going to hurt your hands so much when you're playing on nylon string. It gives you space, more freedom to be able to adjust the hand to be able to get a good sound straight away. And it's also one of the other great advantages, if you're a beginner guitarist and you're looking at um, a guitar for a child, they do three quarter size and half size guitars, which is a very, very good um, option because it means that it's comfortable to play straight away. The other alternative would be the steel string guitar, also known as the acoustic guitar and also known as the electroacoustic guitar. Electroacoustic is simply means that you can plug a quarter inch jack in here and attach it to an amplifier um, and you'd have the microphone set up inside or a saddle pickup underneath here and you can amplify the guitar. Now one of the advantages of the steel string guitar is that by the same token that I said that the neck was thicker on the other one it's a smaller neck so sometimes it's easier for the fingers to play sometimes it's harder Brighter sound, that's the steel strings, they're giving a brighter sound. Again, chamber, so it's a completely open sound, so the technique being that the sound waves resonate within the chamber of the guitar and come out the sound hole and produce the natural sound of the instrument and the woods and the strings. Again, you can use this as a strummed, Great for blues. Now, 
as a guitarist who plays an awful lot, my the tips of my fingers are actually quite hard from the amount of playing that I do. A bit like rock climbers, they harden up the tips of the fingers. And that allows my fingers to bend strings and to play for considerable periods of time. They harden up as you play. Now, on this sort of guitar, the, nut, the thin steel strings do hurt the hands, the softer fingertips. If you're a beginner, it does cause some sort of pain after a period of time of playing but little and often helps uh, relieve that and actually the fingers need to harden up at some point so this isn't a deterrent it's just pointing out the facts and that's what you want when you're looking at buying a new guitar it's it's more about the choice the sounds that you're looking for now of course the other alternative is the electric guitar and the electric guitar is completely solid body you do get um, some guitars where you have uh, open chambers within but these are generally they're solid body guitars and they're using pickups to produce the sound so you again you'd use a quarter inch jack plug in you need amplification for that and without the sound of a You can't play this without amplification, not to get the sound that you're looking for. You see what I mean? Um, however, one of the advantages of the electric guitar is that it's you can find lots of different effects with it using plug-ins and um, using special effects pedals, a rack of special effects pedals. Every amplifier that you have, you can adjust. But the expense of an electric guitar, the additional expense of the amplifier and all these other pedals, it can escalate quite quickly. Additional confusions are that there are so many different sorts of acoustic guitar as well. So let me give you a bit of a rundown on the different types of acoustic guitar there are out there, the benefits, the pros and the cons. Uh, but if I just tell you the differences, you can work out what is going to work for you best. So first is the flagship of the acoustic guitar world, the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought is also regarded as the poster boy. It's what you would what you think of as an acoustic guitar when you see it. Um, one of the most versatile instruments you can pick up. It can be used for a variety of musical settings from and genres from punk to indie, folk to rock. It features a rounded shoulder and the neck typically joins around the body around the 14th fret. So it, this gives it a very even balance between volume, size and an ease of playing as well. So a really good instrument. However, the large body size does sometimes cause problems for some people when they're starting because it's quite a thick section uh, around here. So bringing your arm around to play sometimes is quite large for uh, smaller bodies or smaller hands. By contrast, we have the Parlour guitar. Now, the Parlour acoustics are among the smallest in body size you could buy, not counting the modern baby guitars, and are typically favoured by players that want to play a more low-key or sort of less, less of a brash, harsh effect, more suitable for the styles of folk or indie playing. 
the size of this guitar makes for a more comfortable and less physically intrusive style of playing. Um, the other great advantage, of course, is the portability. It's a smaller body guitar, so therefore it's easier to throw in a, a gig bag and throw over your shoulder and just transport around. Nice and easy. Uh, some of the famous artists that used these instruments were Ian Anderson and Jethro Tull as well. By contrast, you have the largest of all the acoustic guitars, the Jumbo. This body size is considerably larger, larger, so therefore the larger chamber, that means it has a greater volume as well. So brass loud ones that want to have fun, they're the sort of guitar to be playing those. You would have seen the likes of Noel Gallagher and uh, Bob Dylan playing that, and it's sheer volume. It reverberates around the body of the guitar, big, bold sounds, which some people favour. And if you're playing as part of a, a group and you're looking to do that, then that will cut through quite nicely. Now, between the Dreadnought and the Parlour guitar, you've got the hourglass figure of the Auditorium or Grand Auditorium guitars. These are halfway house between the two. Not as small as the Parlour, but certainly not as bulky as the Jumbo and the... Um, dreadnought guitars. This sits on the knee. The hourglass idea comes from the uh, classical guitar uh, feel and shape and it sits on the knee so this lends itself very well to the the style of finger picking so Also has a more resonant bass. Uh, the you can hear the chambers are designed to bring out the bass a little bit more. The other advantage is it has a more rounded neck. Again, similar to the classical guitar. So therefore, that some people find that far more comfortable, even with the thinner, thinner neck size. So that's the auditorium guitar that would be made famous by the likes of Eric Clapton. And, of course, then we come on to the smallest of the guitars. And this is more of a modern, uh, a modern instrument that was made famous by, certainly, Taylor in more recent years. And it's the uh, small-bodied guitars. These are very portable. They can just be thrown over your shoulder. They're very comfortable. Again, with amplification now, we can use it as a semi-acoustic guitar, so therefore the problems of the dynamics are no longer there. Uh, very, made very famous by Ed Sheeran. Uh, he uses it a lot, and as a result of his playing, many people went on to buy the smaller-bodied guitars. Of course, there are manufacturers out there now that constantly update their, uh, their styles, and so therefore... There's a lot of competition, a lot of copies out there. Now, with all of this in mind, we want to... I've given you lots of choices here. What do you go for? What do you want to do? Make a checklist of what you think your body shape would look better with or feel better with, more comfortable with. If you get the opportunity, go to a shop. Try out lots of different styles because sometimes you might well be surprised that you're going with one idea and you'll come out with a very different idea of what you were looking for. If you haven't got that opportunity, get a clear idea in your head what you're looking for, and then you can order online. Again, there's a lot of competition with prices online, some very, very good deals from manufacturers and free delivery as well. So if you want to go and try them out in a shop, go and try them out in the shop and then come back and find the best deals on those. So there are so many important things to look for when trying out a guitar. The pros and the cons, let's go through those. Playability, it's got to be comfortable for you to play. You want to be able to pick this up and play it for considerable periods of time. Secondly, portability. Are you looking for something that you can just throw over your shoulder or that's easy to carry any distances to a mate's house to play, anything like that? Or is it going to be set up in one place in which case you could be looking at your electric guitar with an amplifier that you don't have to transport around everywhere expense very important point when you're beginning to at the very early stages you don't want to buy a guitar and then about 
a month or two down the line, you're thinking, well, no, it wasn't for me. And you want to sell it on and you paid a lot of money for that. You're not going to make an awful lot of money back on that. You're going to lose some, obviously. So why not get an instrument that is going to last you forever? So, for example, one of the methods I use when I start with beginners, I say, why not start with a nylon string guitar? Easier on the hand. You can always use it. You can add to that. If you find you're getting on really well with an instrument like this, you've Develop the technique with your left hand so that it's a very precise technique. You're getting a decent sound. But you want to try and move on to an acoustic guitar. Then move on to an acoustic guitar. If you're going to go to an acoustic guitar, you might want to go for an electroacoustic guitar because that way you can play electro, you can plug it in, or you can play it acoustically. It will work well either way. So that might be a good method. And then you might want a bit of fun. So later on, when you're more of an intermediate advanced level, you'll want to go on to electric guitar. These are the options. But either way, my personal preference is to start with a nylon string guitar, easier on the hands. It gets you going. It starts you off. Now, the next important thing is what to look for when you're buying them. Make sure you're getting the right guitar and I'm going to do another video, not to make this too long, I'm going to do another video which gives you the checklist, what to make sure is in place when you get your guitar or before you purchase your guitar. So check out my next video, which is going to be all about what to check for when you've bought your guitar or just about to buy it, making sure you've got the right one. All the best. I shall see you next time. Hope that helps.